In this video I'm going to look at question 1 from the January 2012 F324 paper. So the very first part of the question is a definition. What is meant by the term isoelectric point? So that's the pH at which the Zwitter ion forms. The next part asks you to draw two structures of the ions formed at pH 6 and pH 1.5. So the pH 6 ion, well that's going to be the Zwitter ion because that is the isoelectric point of alanine. We've got that information there. So what happens is the the H plus from the COH group is donated to the nitrogen of the NH2 group and so we get an NH3 plus group here and a COO minus group there. At pH 1.5 that's obviously below the isoelectric point so in effect you're adding H plus ions to the Zwitter ion so if you surrounded this with H plus ions, where could they go? They would go on the COO minus, and so there it is there. We're now asked about what different R groups could cause different isoelectric points. So what would cause an isoelectric point to be lower than pH 3? So that's obviously an acidic pH. So you just need to come up with an acidic group, so it's obviously the easiest one to go for is the COOH group. And um, an isoelectric point higher than pH 10, so that's obviously basic. So an NH2 group, an amino group, has a high pH. Part B is talking about a specific amino acid called serine, where the R group is a CH2OH group. And we're told it readily forms a condensation polymer containing the peptide linkage. So what I've done at the bottom here, I've actually drawn serine. So I can explain what's going to happen when this forms a condensation polymer. So condensation is the joining together of small molecules to make a longer molecule with the elimination of a small molecule such as water. So to make a water molecule we need to lose the hydrogen from the NH2 group and the OH group from the COOH group. And obviously we're going to just join continuous um, molecules like that together. And so we end up with the polymer chain like this. And we've got two repeat units. There's one there, and there's the other one. Make sure you remember your end bonds. That gets across the idea that it's a polymer. And obviously the pe peptide linkage is this C double bond or NH group. Part C starts talking about alpha amino acids and optical isomerism. So glycine, that's the simplest alpha amino acid where the R group is a hydrogen. Why does glycine not show optical isomerism? And that's because it does not have a chiral centre. So it's basically it's got two hydrogens attached to the alpha carbon and so it can't um, exhibit optical isomerism. So you can see my answer there. The second part of C talks about another alpha amino acid called cysteine and we're given the R group CH2SH and they want you to draw two 3D diagrams for the two optical isomers of cysteine and so you can see over here I've got an empty tetrahedron so that that's essential for this three-dimensional representation so the way I explain this is if you draw up two empty tetrahedron first so that's what I did when I wrote this up and then I just chose the COH group to go on the top there and so it has to be mirrored on the top there A hydrogen here so therefore here the NH2 group's on the wedge, so it must be on the wedge here. And the R group is there and here. And just be careful with your connectivity. That carbon is bonded to that carbon. A little bit about pharmaceutical synthesis now. So it's talking about making pharmaceuticals from peptide-based um, optical isomers. 
and some disadvantages of doing this. So I've got three options for you there. One of them may have harmful side effects. If you make a mixture of both isomers, you've then got to separate them, and that's very, very difficult because they have identical physical properties, melting points, boiling points, and so on. So you're increasing the cost of the process. And the third one there, sort of, we've already got the marks anyway, but the third one that they sometimes allow and sometimes don't, unfortunately, um, the tablet, if you have got a mixture... Um, and the other isomer is fine, it's not going to cause any problems, that would mean that you would have a lower dosage of the active drug. So you'd have to increase the um, dosage because of that. I would go for the first two though. And then the second part of this, state two methods that are used by manufacturers to make pharmaceuticals containing just the required isomer. So that's sometimes known as an enantiopure substance, or so it only contains one enantiomer. So the methods they can use, so any two of these, enzyme catalysis. Remember, enzymes are natural molecules. They occur only in one opt as one optical isomer, and that um, enzyme would ensure that the chirality is um, replicated in the target molecule, so the pharmaceutical. Chiral pool synthesis, so that's where you have a stock of already chiral um, molecules, which kind of ties in with the other bullet point as well. So they're probably not separate bullet points, they're just sort of a continuation of each other. You can see this question's testing quite a lot of different topics. We've now got a question um, about carbon-13, NMR. So we've got to predict the number of peaks in the carbon-13 spectra of those three alpha amino acids. So you can see I've just highlighted the different environments. So you can see in isoleucine there are six carbon environments, so there would be six peaks. Leucine there would be five. And then in tyrosine we've actually got seven. And this one's a little bit more tricky because we've got this benzene ring to deal with. So these are obviously separate, 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 and then that's obviously unique, that's unique because it's got the OH on. These two carbons here are equivalent, and these two are equivalent to each other too. So that's seven altogether. And the last part of the question looks quite awful. Um, it's not too bad, so hopefully my sketches here and here will help. So, you're given an example, when glycine is heated strongly, it can form a cyclic dimer. So here's an example of a cyclic dimer, that's basically just when two of these um, come together and dimerize, form this sort of double molecule. So what's happened there is, if you imagine another one of these, but the other way around, and you take the hydrogen of the NH2 group and marry that together with the OH group of the COH group and that's happened at both sides and so we've created this peptide linkage here and here. So all I've done for this part of for this part of the question, we're given the structure of valine and I've just drawn two up here but you can see what I've done. I've displayed the NH2 group and the COH group and then I've drawn another molecule but I've flipped it round so that the OH is next to the H so I can take out the water molecule like that, same on that side, and then I'm basically just going to push these together and join the HN to the C double bond O. And you would get that. Exactly the same for proline. So you can see I've drawn, there's proline there, but I've displayed the NH and the COH, and I've drawn another one here, but the other way around. Take out the water, and add the two bits together and you would end up with this cyclic dimer.